Ali, hello, I'm Marie Fashionista Sherry. And as always, if you love all things secondhand and vintage and thrifted and refashioned and upcycled and just thrift flips galore, <laughs> then you're definitely in the right place because I share brand new rockin' refashionista videos and tips and tricks and hacks every single week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button, like the tutorials you like, because it tells the algorithm that, you know, push these out. Let's get everybody living a more upcycled, sustainable wardrobe and household lifestyle. But if you've been with me for a little while, you may be thinking, um, Refashionista Sherry, why the heck are you wearing this huge shirt? Well, that is because I scored this shirt and this shirt and this little jacket and this shirt for free and for trades on the Carrot app. If you missed my Carrot app haul video, I'll link it down below for you. It is awesome and amazing. But um, we're gonna we're gonna transform these four whoops shirts today using no sewing whatsoever. So let's go down to the studio and get making. So out of these four fantastic shirts, I think I'm going to start with the flannel because it is the quickest and easiest to refashion. You simply put some hot water into your sink or a bucket plus about a cup and a half to two cups of bleach and then soak half of your shirt. It is so easy to transform this into a grunge type of flannel. And look at that. This is only after about a minute and a half of soaking in the bleach mixture. And now I'm just going to rinse rinse it with cool water and then launder as usual and my fantastically groovy grunge shirt is totally complete without sewing a stitch. Okay, so we just did a bleach dip, so now why don't we do some fabric dyeing and this is just too beige for me, so I think I want to do it a lovely dark color. I'm not sure what though, but I don't have any dark dye just hanging around my house right now, so let's pop on over to the dollar store and grab some. So once again to create my dye bath, I am putting super hot water in my sink and I'm using two dye packets because this cord jacket is kind of heavy fabric. I also always add about a cup and a half of salt to my dye bath because I find it really helps to set the color and keep it fresh for longer. Now we're going to pop the jacket in and really make sure it is saturated. Also, whenever I'm dyeing, I always look around my house and see if I have something else so I'm going to tie dye this ugly yellow t-shirt as well and we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> So while the jacket is in the dye bath, let's just quickly fix this top up. And on my social media, I had asked you which patches you thought I should use. And overwhelmingly, you chose <laughs> the coffee and the donut. So I'm going to use the donut to mend and cover up this little pull in the top here and I don't know if you can see here but there is a little stain down here and we're gonna put the coffee there so let's go iron these on to use iron-on patches, I, of course, arrange my patch and then I cover it with a protective towel and then use a very, very hot iron until it's stuck on. So I'm still going to let this soak in the dye bath for a little bit longer. So in the meantime, let's head on over here and create an awesome set out of this oversized t-shirt. Pardon the hair situation here, but I am attempting to do some sock bun curls. So we're going to see how that comes out, but here we are looking fabulous. Anyway, so as I said, this is a quite a large shirt on me and we're going to turn it into a two-piece summer set without any sewing at all. It's so simple. So the very first thing I have to do is figure out how short long I want the top to be and let's see if we go about here and I'm just going to pop a pin right in there like so and now let's go back to the table and finish this off so i have the shirt laid out as flat as i could get it and i just noticed my pin here is kind of cutting off eddie's forehead so i think instead of doing that i'm gonna go right above 
his head. And now I'm just gonna chop on through. Okay, so the top part of my set is pretty much done. I might go ahead and chop off the finished uh, sleeve cuffs here just for a more deconstructed look, but for now it's, it's done. Now let's work on the skirt. And because this is a Stranger Things shirt, I'm not too concerned that this part of the graphic is going to be upside down because, you know, the upside down and all of that. So I think it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> all right, so here we have the bottom hem of the shirt, which I now have to the top. And this definitely works best with shirts that do not have a side seam because we are simply going to make two little cuts just in the very front of this bottom hem here. So you need to be separating the fabric from the front and the back and putting two little cuts. So I am going to do that right now. So I have my two holes here and they are pretty much in the center. And of course they are just through that front layer of fabric. Now, because my design is right here along the bottom, I can't really cut off a strip and make some t-shirt yarn to go through here for my drawstring waistband. But luckily I have some t-shirt yarn in my stash. So I've already popped a pin in the end of this one and if you don't know how to make t-shirt yarn, just as I said, you just cut off a strip and then once you have your strip cut, you stretch it and look, it folds in onto itself like so and it does not fray and it's just fantastic. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to thread it through the bottom hem here until I come out the other hole. And this is why it's best to use a shirt that does not have side seams because I can just zip this all the way around without having to worry about unpicking the side seams. So yeah, I'm gonna finish that. And then you know what? The skirt is gonna be done too. So as you can see here, I now have a pretty cool no-sew drawstring waistband and I just knotted the ends of the t-shirt yarn here. And now we can finally go over here and finish off this. And all I have to do is give it a good rinse and of course launder it as usual. And then we can go try it on and style it up. Let's see what this t-shirt actually came out like. <laughs> I'm very curious because this was just an afterthought to throw in kind of extra DIY. <laughs> uh, uh. Ah, how cute is that? This t-shirt was a really just, well, it, the whole t-shirt was this kind of yellowish green color, but wowza, that looks so much nicer now, I think, and now I'm probably actually going to wear it. So on the advice of my kiddo, and so I look cool, I'm going to chop off the neckline here so I can also wear this off one shoulder if I want to. So the first thing I've done is just cut a little hole right beside the neckline here, and I'm just going to cut out this finished neckline. So because this shirt was already quite big on me, that's all I have to do to make this wide enough to hang off one of my shoulders. I don't have to cut anymore. If your shirt fits you, then you will have to go ahead and decide which shoulder you want the shirt to be off of and then just gently chop out a little bit more from that side. And keep in mind, it's always a good idea to try it on every single time you make a cut because as I always say, you can always cut more, but trying to put fabric back on is a bit of an issue. <laughs> this is so much better than the horrible beige that it was before. I mean, seriously, my hair is beige, my skin's beige, so if I wear a beige jacket, I'm just a big beige, and that's not fun or cool or anything. Also, I added this lovely sewing patch, of course. So now it truly is a refashionista sherry jacket and I really love how this came out. And I was just thinking to myself, 
How many no so did I do? One, two, three, four, five. Five totally no so tutorials that, as you saw, were so incredibly easy. You don't need any special tools or equipment or talent or anything, right? These are just five very, very easy ways to transform those items that you already have in your closet that you're just not feeling anymore for whatever reason. And as always, if you want even more rockin' refashionista ideas and tutorial, zuh, <laughs> <laughs> scroll through my channel, check out my blog. I have my e-courses, of course, which are super cheap and cheerful, and you get 50% off with the code REFASHION50. Plus, I'm working on something pretty special right now, and hopefully it's going to be done very, very soon because it's a whole new thing, and it is very, very cool. So stay tuned for that announcement. It is coming up very soon. I just have to have to get it all done and uploaded and ah, it's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed these five awesome no so tutorials. And please let me know down below if you actually use my tutorials. I want to know the things that you make. And you know, you can, you can share them with me over on my Facebook page or TikTok or Twitter or, you know, I'm everywhere. So just share your makes with me. I'd love to see them. And until next time, <laughs> stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag. How oh, seriously cute is this patch? It just, this whole outfit is pretty darn awesome, I think. <laughs> this is Confessions of a Refashionista.